Okay, this is going to be a VI called swap, and it's used to take an array and take two elements in that array and swap their location. So we better start off with an array. I'll create a, uh, an empty array, and we'll just leave it called array. And so far it's undefined. We need to give it a type, so we'll put a numeric control in there. And now we have an array of numbers. I'll resize it so we can see a few of these numbers, and I'll put a few numbers uh, by default in here. I'll tab over to get the operate tool, and let's go with uh, 5, 1, 4, 2, 8. Um, and what I want to be able to do is um, have the VI take this array, and I want to specify two different locations, say, I don't know, this one and this one, and have it swap those two locations and produce an output array. So since I need an output array, I better make that. And I'll just do it by drag copying, holding the control button down to make a copy of it. It's called array two. I'll rename it uh, swapped array. And it's still a control. We need to make it an indicator. So we can just right click on the array, change it to an indicator. So here's my input. Here's my output, and I need two more controls to identify the location of the elements in this array that I want to switch. There'll be two of them. So I'll create a numeric control for the first one and call it to index one. And by default, it's a uh, double precision number, floating point number, and that's, that's fine as far as it goes. But in fact, the locations inside an array are integers. So I'll right click and change its representation to I think I32 is what it wants. And I'll just drag copy to make a second one, automatically called index two, and here they are. What I need now is um, to identify the, the two locations. So I'll start, I'll use the operate tool and I'll give these a couple of values, say two and three. That means uh, I want to take uh, elements two and three from this array and swap them. This is um, not number one, this is zero. This is at um, index position zero. One, two, three, four. So by specifying the two and the three, that means I want to take zero, one, two, three, the four and the two, these two numbers, and swap them. That's what I want to have happen. So the first thing I need to do is use um, a command to go and get these two values. Um, and the function I want for that is an array function, and it's called index array. And it's a resizable function. You can use the resizing tool to get as many elements from an array as you want. I'm going to need two of them. So I wire the array to it, and I wire the two index numbers to these two positions as well. And when this runs, what's going to come out of these two locations um, are the array elements at index 1, which is 2, and at index 2, which is a number 3. And they're going to come out here and here. That's fine. Uh, as far as it goes, I could temporarily just create indicators. just to see how, how it's working so far. And when I run this, let's see what I get. Well, it took this array, it went to index position two, and got this number and wrote it here. That's what came out of this wire. You can run this again. The array goes in and out comes these two uh, values at index one and two. I don't actually need these. I just wanted to use those temporarily to check and see if the program was doing what I thought it was going to do. And I'll just neaten it up a little bit, keep it nice and compact. So what I want to actually do is take the array and take the two numbers at these two positions and substitute their values into the array. So I want to, the uh, replace array subset function. That's another array command. There's this one. It's also resizable. 
So what we do here is give it the original array. And here we have, uh, we can do as many substitutions on the array as we want. Again, this is a resizable function. We could replace as many elements as we want. We want to do two of them. So what I want to do is take the array and whatever element is at this index, I'll, I'll take from this number, and I'll replace it with what came out of the other one. Okay, so this will read the array, it'll get these two values from these two positions, and it'll take the value from index 2 and put it to index 1, and vice versa. At index 2, I'll wire that up, and the value that's going to go in there is what comes out of the other index position. That should pretty much do it. I'll write this output to the swapped array and hit control U to make the whole thing nice and tight and clean and tile the screen again. And if I run this now, we can see that the array is unchanged except elements two and three. This one and this one have been swapped over here. That's a handy function. I want to be able to use it as a sub VI. So I'll take my connector pane. I could just use this one. Uh, but I'll use one that's a little more appropriate. I have three inputs and one output. So if I find a pattern that's kind of similar to that, there's one, uh, there's another one, there's one that's got four inputs and one output. So I'll wire it up. You don't have to, but you really, really should always put the controls on the left hand side of the connector pane and put the outputs, the indicators, on the right hand side so it makes sense when you use it as a sub VI. There's one more thing I'm going to do um, and this reason isn't obvious at this point. We'll, we'll see it a little bit later. I want this to only do this uh, substitution, this swap, if, um, if something is true. So I'm going to add a boolean control here and uh, I'll use a rocker switch because I like them and I'll call it swap and I'll show the boolean text swap is either on or off when it's on I want this swapping operation to happen and when it's off I'd like the array to just go straight through without any swapping so to do that I'll use a case structure I'll open this up again give myself a little bit of room to work And what I'm going to do is add a case structure for the two cases. This is the true case as it happens. In the false case, well, I'll just take the array and wire it right through. Um, because, let me pause for a moment, because this is a case structure and it passes data out of one of the cases, the true case passes data out of the structure outside to this indicator. If that happens, it means all of the cases that are available, they all have to pass something out here. So what I'm going to do is for the false case, I'll just wire the array straight through. So that now when I run this program, I run it continuously. Uh, it's off, so the array goes straight through unchanged. When it's on, the swap happens. You can see these two values here, they get swapped when this is on, but not when it's off. That's one extra control, so I'll include that on the, uh, the connector pane as well. Uh, also, I'll go over here, I'll maximize this, and maybe I'll hit Control U to clean this up tightly again. I find the cleanup makes it a little tighter than I'd really like it to be. And in fact, I believe there's an option where you can control that under tools, options. I'll wait a moment here. I don't know if this window is too big or not. Um, under the block diagram, options. Down near the bottom, there's a thing for block diagram cleanup. That's that control U function. It gives you some spacing options, how many pixels you want in there. It's got some defaults. You can just increase those to 
something else, something bigger. Um, and save those options. And then when you hit Control U, it should give you a, a looser structure, not quite so tight and claustrophobic. I'll tile the windows again so I can see them both. And that pretty much does it. We'll just save this as um, swap array elements or just swap. I've already got one called swap, so I won't actually resave mine. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope this helps. We're going to use this swap VI in the next video, which